Okay then, so um, that's the scene set, and uh, well, well, maybe to further sort of clarify and simplify, uh, APC, Governor Yitola, you know, his lawyers and the APC had, um, they'd actually asked the tribunal to decide on three issues. One was that Adeleke was unqualified to run for the office of governor. Two, that um, there was overvoting in 744 uh, polling units, and three, that the election was not conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act of uh, 2022. So uh, now I can come back to you, Dr. Latif. Um, give me your uh, summation and understanding of um, the legal uh, thought that went into the result we have. Yeah, Uncle Yori, uh, good morning once again. Yeah, um, morning, the, the judgment that came out of Oshun this past Friday uh, to my mind, uh, would not really, I mean, uh, be surprising to anyone who has paid keen attention to the petition while the proceedings, you know, was ongoing in court. But of course, I also understand that many people did not pay attention because they thought the INEC beavers and based on what INEC told us about beavers, so they thought the beavers was um, invaluable, if I can use that word. And as such, there is nothing you know that could come out of Oshun than the court upholding the election of the person who was declared winner on the uh, 17th of July last year. But it didn't come to me as a surprise because Sometime last year in August, when the petitioner filed their petition before the court, so I took my time to, you know, get hold of the petition and the reply of all the respondents, the three of them. I went through the document, and as at that time, I recall that I did a short piece where I came to a conclusion that the petition of the petitioner was unassailable. Now, I came to that irresistible conclusion because of what I saw in the document that I read, you know, from all parties. And that's exactly, for me, you know, is what this tribunal confirmed this past Friday. And basically, what was that? So I noticed that, uh, just as the tribunal has confirmed, shortly after the election was concluded and the winner was declared, the APC applied to the INEC to obtain... Uh, the report of the BFAS. By the way, the BFAS is the electronic device or card reader, which has now, under the new Electoral Act, you know, replaced the old practice of how we accredit voters. So that under the 2022 Electoral Act, the BFAS is the only, you know, legal, uh, I would say, device to accredit voters. So when the APC applied to the INEC to obtain the report of that BVAS. Then they got the report, they, 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 they filed their petition. Then that was, I think, um, they got the report around 27th of uh, July, if I'm not wrong. And then they filed the petition based on the report and the analysis of the petition. So then they served the petition on the INEC, on PDP and the governor. Then the INEC, a month after that, that, that time, they filed their own response. And in this response, INEC then purports to have, you know, um, concluded another BVAS report, which I think they ingeniously, or I would rather say mischievously, you know, titled Synchronized BVAS. So when I spotted that, I actually became very curious as to what exactly, you know, regarding the idea of synchronizing report. The question is, at what point did this so-called, you know, synchronization took place and all of that? So when I saw all of those things and then I analyzed them vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the provisions of the law, I, I knew, you know, in my mind at that time that the petition was going to, I mean, most likely was going to succeed. So when the tribunal eventually came to that conclusion on Friday, one, that the governor uh, was actually elected, you know, through illegal vote, what you call overvoting now, under Section 51 of the Electoral 2022. So that did not really come to me as a surprise. And the only surprise really for me was uh, the minority judgment, which does not seem to agree 
with the majority. Proud, I mean, I make as an interested party. So when they filed their response to the petition, and of course, after they had, you know, got wind of the complaint in the petition, so they issue another BVAS report to themselves, which they now call synchronize. Then while the proceeding was pending, the PDP also applied for another one, which they also issued. So at the long run, as at the time the tribunal was deciding the case, you had at least three conflicting beavers reports over the same election conducted in the same state. And then there was a third one, which was the you know beavers electronic device uh, uh, themselves. So 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 the, the tribunal had no choice, you know, as a matter of law, but to look at all of these conflicting documents. And in fact, that was what the majority actually decided. They said they considered the first beavers, the second one, and all other one, and they saw that the best thing to do in the circumstances, you know, was to resolve, you know, this issue of conflict or uh, issue of credibility, uh, you know, in favor of the first one that was issued by the first party at the time that a winner was declared, or upon which a winner was declared, and at the time that there was no dispute in contemplation, or nobody has filed any. So for me, really, there are two takeaways from this. What has happened in Oshun is a very good news. A good news because we have an important election ahead of us next month. I mean, barely uh, 25 days today or so. So this should give INEC an opportunity to go back to the drawing board and then review this issue of synchronization and other things that has crept into our electoral jurisprudence from Oshun, which is not in our legal system. Now, mm -hmm. the bad news again is that the so-called beavers, which people actually thought, you know, is invaluable, has invaluable now in a way become, if you ask me, a subject of doubt. Mm. And this, if we are not careful, may erode confidence in the electoral process. So okay. it's a two, you know, edge sword for me. All right, then. Okay, Dr. Latif, I want to thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Latif, uh, in case you missed it, uh, well, you uh, is reaching us from the UK. He's a senior uh, lecturer at uh, the University of Hull uh, there in the UK. Now, um, Honorable Oluladi, the main plank, uh, uh, I think, uh, was that there was over voting. Okay. Yeah. And um, that's an absolute no-no. It's even been said that where there, are over, where there is over voting, it, it automatically invalidates all the votes in that area. But um, when we look at uh, what came out of that ruling, um, the, they decided, uh, the Lord Chiefs then decided to deduct, uh, you know, in fact, this, this deducting those excess votes, those extra votes, affected both of the candidates. Yeah. Both of them, they were affected. It's just that so by the time the thing, uh, the way accountants balance the books, by the time you are taking the excess from here, taking the excess from there, uh, in, in fact, uh, the way we have it is that um, the deduction shrank Adelike's votes from 403,000 to 290,000. I'm leaving out the rest of the figures, but just looking at the big figure. Nice, so it yeah. shrank um, Adelike's votes from 403,000 to 290,000. And on the, uh, uh, in the case of uh, Governor Yetola, the winner of it, Governor Oyetola was declared the winner. Well, um, for me, I think um, the judgment is in good faith. Um, if you look at the defendant, what they asked for mm. was in two legs. The first leg of it is the overvoting, mm -hmm. which is clearly mm -hmm. on our electoral law that says that anyone, any polling booth where there is overvoting is total cancellation. And that is what the judgment have done. I mean, the judges have done. And the tribunal have been able to uh, affirm that, that there is overvoting. And this overvoting was not just being accepted or, uh, by, the, by APC. It's also being accepted by PDP and even INEC. They all testify to the fact that there is overvoting. So if there is overvoting, the law is clear about overvoting. The second leg is the issue of certificates. And if all the judges at the tribunal agreed 
that Governor Adeliki presented forged certificates to INEC for the election. That automatically also should have made Adeliki not to be qualified to contest that election. And I think uh, why they are going for appeal, if they are really prepared for uh, that appeal, I think uh, the, the APC lawyers mm -hmm. should also go further well, well, I, I think they... to determine if somebody who have forged, who have been established to commit a criminal act by forging a certificate mm -hmm. can also be declared as a winner okay. of an election. Well, I, I, I think um, uh, when I was reading uh, the reports uh, on, on that particular uh, ruling, I think they, uh, even the majority, uh, first of all, the first plea of uh, APC was that Governor Adeleke was not qualified to, to contest. contest that election, but yeah. they de determined that he was qualified, uh, even as there were allegations of forgery in the... Has been established by, by, by it, them. It, well... It's, it's, it's been but, established even but, with their ruling. But he was qualified... Uh, in their eyes, because, in their sight, because um, he had alternative qualifications. Uh, don't forget that the base minimum is a uh, school set. So yes. he had a, alternative qualifications that sort of matched that. So on that score about he's not qualified, I mean, to contest that election, I think they sort of let that one go. But the one that cannot be let go of is this whole matter of you can't do what you've done, uh, you know, you can't overvote, and then expect to, you know, uh, expect that to, to pass. And, and that is one thing I'm trying to point out, that if somebody have a criminal matter, okay. is he qualified <laughs> to also contest an election as a governor of a state? This is a criminal matter. You cannot forge a, a, your certificate. Aside from, yes, we all know that once you have a school site, or it's equivalent, I could have respected Governor Adeliki to have presented the school site if he does have, or is equivalent. But if you have not done that, and you have gone ahead to present a forged result, it's a criminal. Why we are also agreeing with the, the judge, judgment that says that once there is an overvoting, that polling booth or that uh, election, that word or whatever, should be cancelled. And they have established that. And we have seen that from the onset, Governor Oye, uh, Oyetola is the winner of that election. Indeed. Because so, but and, and Beavers, sincerely speaking, we, we now realize that we cannot just close our eyes to some of these things. If we just see that the result comes out and we just believe that uh, Beavers is correct and those who are manipulated, in every system that was always. This manipulator. Yeah, because the beavers so, is supposed to authenticate the voters. And that is what beavers have done. And that, but, so to now have a disparity in figures. Yes, in other words, because, people were able to vote without... Anek, Anek should, be, should be questionable on that. Yes, yes. So you cannot... And those people who are involved in those polling booths, they can't just go score free. Okay, exactly. If we must continue to straighten our electoral law, those people who are involved who were, um, what do they call them, uh, returning officers, in those polling booths that they have over voting. They must be called to caution. Yeah. Uh, uh, doc, Dr. Latif, do, do you agree with that? I mean, that, that INEC, um, you know, because INEC went to great lengths to tell us that it was going to make this idiot proof, foolproof, and still some people appear to have been working against the process so that we have a situation where the, the court had to now reduce... Uh, the uh, 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 Adelike's votes from 403,000 to 290,000, and uh, 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 Oyetola's votes from 375,000 to 314,000. So a final score of, you know, 290K, 290,000 for, you know, Governor Adelike, um, yes, and uh, 314,000, 290 to 314,000 for Governor Oyetola. INEC has a INEC has a case to answer in this, do you think? Dr. Latif. 
Okay, yeah. Sorry, permit me before I come to that to quickly address the issue of forgery. Okay. And I want to align my thoughts, you know, with what has been said in the studio. So, so, so the point is that I think another interesting aspect of this case, you know, as the parties now go on appeal, is the aspect uh, of this forgery thing. And I agree with the thought that the tribunal actually somersaulted when it held in one breath that Mr. Adeliki was qualified to contest that election, and then he went ahead in another breath, all of them, to say or to confirm the fact that there was a forgery. You see, the requirement of law here basically does not recognize this idea of alternative certificate. What the law says is that you are not allowed to present any fake or forged certificate at whatever level. It could be for age, it could be for education, for whatever. So once it is found that a candidate presented a forged certificate at any level of the, you know, a uh, qualification requirement, then that candidate becomes automatically disqualified. And I think that is what the tribunal have done. Like I said, that is another issue. Hopefully, you know, the respondent at the court of appeal now will definitely explore. Now, having said that, yes. INEC should be held liable in this case. In the first place, it was INEC that told us, I mean, the world, you know, that this Beaver's device or the smart reader device, you know, is, if you ask me, something invaluable. I mean, something that can only be compromised. But as we have seen now, we now understand that the human factor, which has been a major problem in our electoral system, you know, has not really been greatly addressed. Because okay. if the human factor, you know, had not come into play here, we wouldn't have had the kind of embarrassing experience I think INEC, you know, should admit now, All which right, has come then. out of us. One, one second, please, Dr. Latif. Let me bring in uh, our first caller, uh, Mr. George. Good morning to you. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Uncle Yeri. Good morning. And, uh, good morning to your guests. Sure. Uncle Yeri, I was following that uh, procedure in court as well. I was uh, taken aback when INEC, INEC representative, came to the court to admit that there was overvoting on the one hand, but contested the beavers initially. Then went back to the office and brought a second beavers. When the law does not recognize that anything like that will be done, it was from there. I knew that something was amiss in INEC. Uncle Yori, many people are enthusiastic about this coming election because they believe that INEC has been able to inject credibility into our electoral process. Why is it that INEC discovered that there was overvoting and apparently some of their personnel have misbehaved? Rather than coming to apologize to the public and address the matter, they went ahead trying to present what the court can accept. That can erode credibility on the part of INEC by the public. And that is what we must try to avoid. Okay. I'm saying this on Kuyori because I heard a few days ago that some Nigerians in diaspora are trying on behalf of a political party to clone INEC Porter for this coming election. If INEC is not careful and such attempts succeed, are we not going to, going to be in trouble? I think you need to bring uh, uh, Mike Gini. Let him talk to us on this because we know the role he has been playing in INEC uh, uh, development process. That's right. Okay. Good morning. Thank you uh, very much uh, for calling in. Um, I think what I'll do at this stage is maybe I should go on a break so that we won't be further interrupted. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be right back. Politics is defined as getting what, where, when, and how. But in the mix, many things come to play to shape the political fortune of any country. Mr. Honorable Minister, 
From the political actors to the electorate, campaign to voting, from debates to policy decisions, big events happen to engage us in constant conversation. That's what we're looking for. Not some people are talking about ethnicity. No. Who is on your mind? Don't worry. Join me every day on Politics Tonight, where we dissect issues that shape our political destiny. Is dedicated to World Braille Day to celebrate the inventor Lewis Braille. On 6th January, it will be two years when U.S. Capitol was attacked by the then President Donald Trump supporters. On 8th January 2020, Ukraine International Airline Flight 752 was shot down shortly after takeoff. 15th January is the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, which marks the end of the Civil War in 1970. 24th January is International Education Day. On 27th January, it will be 21 years after the Keja Cantonment Blast Accord. 29th January's notable events. Okay, welcome back. And um, we're looking at the Friday uh, decision that was handed out by the tribunal uh, looking into the governorship election in Oshun State. Uh, Governor Oyeleke won that election. Uh, I, beg, I beg about it. Governor Oyetola, former Governor Oyetola, because let's just be using the term. Former Governor Oyetola won that election, but Einek in error gave the victory to the um, sitting governor now, because he's going to be appealing, I imagine. Um, and um, it's clear, if, if the clarity we have now that Governor Adeleke, from his 403,000 votes, by the time they, they uh, deducted the overvoting, came down to 290 votes, uh, 290,000 votes. Uh, and when you compare, Oyetola also lost. 375,000 votes came down to 314. In other words, Adeleke was more impacted by the excess voting than Oyetola was, but both of them record, recorded in the different uh, uh, polling units over voting. Over -voting. You know, so that's the situation that we, we, we have on our hands there. And um, it seems clear, but how we now go forward? Maybe I should bring Dr. Latif into this. What are the things uh, that are going to sort of become forward and center uh, if this matter is appealed, which I believe it will be, if the, uh, if the PDP um, you know, uh, legal team says that we're going to appeal this, which is their right to do. What do you expect the court to now be concentrating on? From well, uh, uh, okay, uh, going forward, of course, I expect the uh, respondents at the tribunal who are now the appellants to appeal this, I mean, they have made that point, and it is quite understandable. And we expect them to make a heavy reliance on the minority judgment. Oh, okay. Um, but yes, uh, you know, the minority judgment actually support them. But unfortunately, I have read, of course, the two judgments, the minority judgment, and with due respect, you know, to my Lord who wrote the minority judgment, and I don't really think there is much to hold on to on that minority judgment. And you may want me to compare this with what happened in 2018. Uh, in 2018, where we had a similar judgment, a majority and minority, the minority at that time actually turned out to be the talking point for experts. But it was so comprehensive. It was so well presented. It was so deep. Uh, as opposed to, with due respect, uh, the minority judgment of just eight pages that I've read in the past few days, and which doesn't seem to have gone into... You know, so much legal analysis of some of this. But whatever it is, uh, the respondent clearly, you know, we want to make, uh, I mean, that's something, a, a launching pad for them. I mean, they want to say that, well, one of the judges actually agree with us. Yes. And so then the Court of Appeal may also want to go the same line. But of course, the successful party, who are now the respondent at the appeal, appeal court, they will also want to, you know, make, uh, so much uh, uh, out of the majority judgment, which actually affirmed one that uh, there was a forgery, and which will have, in my own opinion, like I said earlier, led to a disqualification of Mr. Deleke. 
They will also want to hold on to the fact that that same tribunal affirmed that there was overvoting. And you see, the implication of overvoting here is clearly stated under Section 51 of the Electoral Act. It is simply for the court to remove those votes. And then if there is enough vote, you know, in the uh, basin, as it were, they can go ahead to declare the winner. And that is what they have done in this case. Okay, one and moment, sir. Let, let me bring in uh, Lukman in Accra, Ghana. And he's been waiting for quite a while. I beg your pardon. So, uh, good morning to you, Mr. Lukman in Ghana. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for happy calling in, sir. sir. Good morning. Yeah, yeah we have... Uh, I'm so happy that the beavers have added so much to uh, our electoral law. And I'm happy about... Uh, uh, the way it has indicated the uh, over, over voting at the, this tribunal judgment. But the most important thing about our election and our democracy is the mandate of the people must work. And on this issue, now, Uncle Yori, you can, every politician has their strong hope, and every political party has their strong hope. If, we, if this law, I have a problem with the law that said anywhere there is overvoting must be cancelled. Okay. Because an opposition that knows that my strong, it can come to my stronghold and do overvoting, which it will end up to be cancelled. And I will lose the higher vote I suppose to get from my, my police unit or from my constituency. So the INEC should do everything possible that there must not be overvoting in any police unit because politicians will surely have a way to find their way to affect one, one another. Mm -hmm. if, they can, if they can do overvoting and they know that, okay, he's, he's having 200,000 votes, 200, votes from here, I'm having 30,000 votes from here, the person that is having 30,000 votes, we go there, might go there and do overvoting so that... I will lose 200,000 votes, and you will lose 30,000 votes. And it's going to affect the, uh, Let the me result of oh, the election. Oh, oh. I, 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 I wonder if that can actually uh, happen. happen. But, but thank you very much, Mr. Lukman. Let, let, let's let's uh, kick this around a bit. Um, uh, let, let me quickly address The scenario that, he painted. Uh, scenario. People you dubiously cannot, go... Mm -hmm. You cannot do over voting where you don't have your strength. It's your place of strength that you can do over voting. They cannot tell me now that... The overvoting that happened in their day is in favor of Oyetola. It's not possible. Or the overvoting that might happen in Ragbiji is in favor of Adeleke. It's not possible. It is where you have your stronghold, where you can determine what happens. That is where you can go ahead to say you want to do overvoting. You can't be a minority in a place and you are trying to do overvoting in that place. In order to support so it's not possible. the vote. Yes, that, that, that's so not that possible. Idea. Uh, that idea... Is, a, is not tenable in, 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 the, okay. in the practical Okay, uh, even from, election. from a political, from, from being on ground. Yes. You, know, just, you, it, must, you must be in control of that polling booth. And it, the, what really happened is that or something will have happened that will make them to succeed in overvoting. Because the beavers is clear. If you don't, if you are not, uh, you have yep. not been accredited yes. by beavers, you cannot vote. But, but that actually then went and happened, contrary yes. to all expectations. Contra yes, because and they that's are in why control in that area. I, I, so uh, but, but, so how, everywhere how, how much in control that, uh, can you be if INEC is also there? Yeah. INEC being the neutral that umpire. That is what we are saying, that INEC is also culpable in this matter. So they cannot isolate themselves from what happened in okay. all the polling units. Okay, let me take Benga from uh, Buja. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Yori, and good morning to your good, two guests. Thank you. Well, the judgment of the tribunal did not surprise me because in the final defense address of the two parties, PDP, uh, the party, the, the PDP, admitted over voting, but they were saying that after, after deduction, they will still leave at 20,000. It's on paper. It was reported. So when, once they had admitted over voting, I knew that there's a problem for them. Because voting means that all... If you are voting in that polling unit, both, both for parties will be cancelled. They will not leave one, leave the other. And overvoting cannot be done where you don't have some goal. Like, the, uh, you, can, you, you do overvoting where you know you are in charge. Nobody can challenge you. And that's why we look at the region, the area that were cancelled, the telecom government, where we are at the lake, were having upper hand, where they were con under their control. So what the other person from Ghana in Sunedi cannot happen. You can't go to your city or 
your, your, your position area where you don't have strong, area, strong standing and do a voting, who will support you? I mean, they will be easily exposed. You can only do a strong goal. And this election, the result of this, this tribunal or something, are really a solo that look. We should not rely solely on Viva. Somebody will operate Viva. Somebody will man that thing. And that comes to INEC, uh, people that are working for INEC. That once they can be compromised, they can influence election. If APC in the, at the Joshua have not been very vigilant, they have come quickly and say, look, there's a voting somewhere. And they went ahead to obtain the result of yes. Viva even before they filed their petition. Now, the PDC now went ahead to obtain the vote of Beavers when the trial was already, when the tribunal was already sitting. And their own was different from what, what APC brought. And they challenged NINEC. Why, why, why are the difference? And I was saying, yeah, when APC come, we have not recognized our Beavers. But now we have You can see again, that INEC are copied in all these things. And they're supposed to bring these people to book. That should be a law. That if you support over voting, you are going to be charged. Let us go on a criminal trial. Because let me tell you, no matter the technology will bring, one, the human aspect is not taken care of. I'm telling you, we, we just mess up the, the, the whole process. So I then had a lot of questions to answer. Well, what happened in Moshun? They should come and tell us how they allow over voting. People voted without viewers. If not, this coming election, people are already planning to apply that same thing in their own stronghold. I'm not naming party because each party has a strong, so all party has a strong group. They want to employ the same thing, bypass vivas and vote. Before you know it, somebody will spend like one year as a president before you remove by law. Yes. It's not good for us. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, uh, Mr. Benga from uh, Abuja. Uh, so, uh, and that there is the crux of the matter. Um, INEC does have some explaining to do, any way you look at it, because. INEC has worked very, very hard at this, come up with these BIVAS, uh, Bimodial Voters Accreditation System, I think is what BIVAS is all about. Yeah. Uh, but this is the thing, I don't know if it's a Nigerian thing or if it's a global thing. People were working against it. People were actually successfully, well, put su the word successfully in quotes, quotes. voting without uh, being uh, BIVAST. Uh, BIVAST. How can you do that? That's what INEC is going to have to come and tell us. Because, um, and what, what it, the import of that for the big election, that is the presidential and all the other governorship elections, I guess, you know, this I, is the situation think, we have to I think Oshun election have exposed us to so many things today. I think we can now know how to manage the election proper. And people will realize that by doing over voting, you are also affecting your own votes in that particular domain. Exactly. So that will help the exactly. general election. Exactly. And, uh, because uh, everyone, and, and that's why I, I must commend the tribunal for coming up swiftly to mm -hmm. address the issue of exactly. overvoting. Oh, okay. So that everybody will understand that and once there is overvoting, there is going to be cancellation. Yes. So don't even dream of doing any overvoting. Okay. Okay. Go there, ensure that you, your PVC is, uh, uh, Beavers have accredited you mm -hmm. before you can even vote. Sure. So and with that, there won't be an issue of uh, overvoting. If Beavers does not recognize your PVC, do not vote. Exactly. And so, uh, and as you said, it's, very, it's been very helpful of uh, the Lordships, uh, that, that tribunal, yeah. to explain to us that by the time you remove overvoting, Adeleke's votes were actually 290,000. Uh, not the 403,000 that was initially thought. And uh, Oyetola's votes were 314,000, not the 375,000 we thought. So base score now, Adeleke, 290,000, Oyetola, 314,000. It's clear who the, uh, were, they have to the declare winner. the winner. Um, uh, Fidel, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for calling in. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. Indeed, compliments of the season to you. Same to you. Uh, let me say that what happened in Oshu State is, should be a lesson to both Nigerians and the, our electoral system and the fact the entire country. I am saying this because it simply shows that in spite of the use of beavers, that people can still find a way of having their fraudulent activities. And that is why we must learn now. INEC has to sit up. Find a way of ensuring that as we go in for the main election, come later this uh, later next month, that this type of thing will never happen. Issue of overvoting is a disgrace in a country where 
people have been planning. Everybody has confidence in the use of beavers and so on. And we are expressing this. Let all the loopholes be blocked. Because all human errors must also be taken care of. It's a lesson to INEC. It's a lesson to the federal government. And it's a lesson to Nigerians. Everybody must be watchful. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Fidel Loyeneke. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, uh, Mr. Yoneke. Um, uh, so, uh, Dr. Latif, if they, I suppose the lawyers of uh, Adele, of uh, Oyetola and uh, APC, they, 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 they must be commended because um, that it, all of this was found out accidentally, as a matter of fact, but it's because they were being thorough and they were requesting documentations. Let me see this report, please. We know this thing is not kosher. There, there's something wrong here. And so uh, there's a, probably a sense in where uh, lawyers were, the lawyers were quite diligent, would you, would you say, uh, Dr. Shitu, uh, Dr. Latif? Yes, I mean, we, we cannot really overstress that the lawyer to the petitioner, and I must say, I mean, the respondent too, because from their own brief, I mean, usually this requires a lot of effort on all sides, but lawyer to the petitioner must be commended, like I said, you know, for bringing out these issues. Because prior to the Oshun's, and this is where, as I said earlier, many people did not pay attention to that petition. It came as a surprise to them. The idea about beavers, as I presented to us, you know, was that the beavers, as I've said earlier, is invaluable. Now, these lawyers have been very diligent and thorough, you know, to be able to identify some of these loopholes and to be able to also expose INEC. Because what has happened really here is that INEC particularly, you know, compromise itself. And as we speak now already, INEC should be talking, identifying which of the officials actually participated in that, what I can actually call a criminal activity. Because if you look at the judgment of the tribunal, the court literally said that there was a compromise, you know, of the official or public document. So whoever for that, Usually, you have desperate politicians who may want to have the outcome of the election to favor them and all of that. But if INEC is not complicit, if INEC had not issued a second beavers, for example, or even a third one, perhaps we will not be saying all of this. So INEC should come out to really clarify things, particularly as regards the so-called synchronization. Mm -hmm. So that before we go to the main election next month, everybody will know what exactly does the guideline contain? Mm -hmm. Or what does it entail? So basically, I think we should commend the lawyer who brought out these issues and who, in a way, have helped to also develop, you know, our electoral jurisprudence. And I think Oshun generally, and Governor Itola himself, should also be commended. You know, Oshun has been notorious for this. I mean, when Governor Aregwe Shola had this election, it was subsequent to that election and the fraud that were exposed at that time that the Electoral Act was amended. So going forward again now, I see INEC taking a huge lesson from this. Like I said earlier, to go back to the drawing board and make sure that they tidy up their activities so that we don't go through this embarrassment again. Indeed. If INEC could not compromise, as I said, we will continue to have a credible election. And two things here. First, the official who man the beavers, they must be thoroughly trained so that they don't allow anyone to bypass the beavers. And also, the Beavers report must be consistent. So All the right, idea yeah. of saying what? I, I beg your pardon, uh, do, uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Latif, so sorry. Uh, let me bring in another caller, Majid Jamil, calling in from Lagos. Good morning, MJ. <laughs> good morning, Uncle Yori. Good and, morning, uh, sir. Good morning, good morning to uh, Eleni. Um, <laughs> three things I need to address here. One is uh, the issue of uh, the presiding uh, judge imputing uh, the, that the second respondent, which is Adelike, can no longer go low. Um, now, in law, it is allowed for the, for the judge to give a reason for the judgment and to also talk about commentary on, uh, on the judgment. Now, the go low low aspect is a commentary. And the, the, the judge could have taken verses from the Holy Quran, could have taken verses from the uh, Bible, he could have quoted Shakespeare. Nobody would have spoken. Judges are also human. Rather than they, his Daniel. Yes, yes. He could have, he could have taken uh, probably even David O'Son. 
uh, Omo Baba Olowo, he can take his daughter, no longer go and be Omo Baba Olowo, you know. He could have said that it is allowed in law. So, if the community cannot appeal based on that, another thing is the fact that, you see, when you want to win, you win responsibly. I don't want to use the word rig here. Now, there's a difference between the number of voters on the voters register and the number of those who are eligible to vote for card, people who have PVC. So when they were reading, they were reading irresponsibly, they were using the voters register. For example, if you have 1,000 voters register, where 1,000 voters on a register on election day, I may could give you all the people, the names of all the people that registered, but there is another list that I may could not give you that has the list of if you have 1,000 voters, maybe only 800 has PVC. I may could not give you that. So they were irresponsibly working with 1,000 rather than so they were just cooking up the figures and Beaver has come clean on that. So this judgment is giving credit to Beaver and is giving credit to INEC. And I think INEC to be responsible by withdrawing that certificate, which the tribunal has ordered it to withdraw. Indeed. Those well, are my points. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MJ. Uh, Majid Jamio calling in from uh, Lagos. So the, uh, to get it right in the next election, where I'm, and by next I mean the presidential election, because we can't be going through this kind of a thing. No, so no. I might now thank God for Oshun and uh, all of this. So everybody's eye is open now, as yes. we say locally, you know, yes. from INEC to all the parties, those who may want to rig, uh, they now see that this thing is not going to be as easy. Uh, in fact, I, I, it's just that I suppose it will, it, will, it will fizzle out, it will peter out along the line. But for INEC to have done all of this work, and for some people to be sitting down and be doing equally as much work, if not more, to frustrate it. Uh, yes, I take the criticism that INEC needs to know the kind of people they are putting in charge of very, very sensitive uh, equipment. Well, uh, another thing that uh, we cannot also overlook is the threats to INEC server. Uh, as okay, were, uh, that has been brought up. That has been brought up by Mr. George. Um, for me, I, I think it's also a high hope to us that a particular political party, most especially the PDP, they are planning from Dubai or wherever they are sitting to ensure that the, the beavers and the uh, servers of INEC is okay. being tampered with. And that INEC yeah, must but, come out. Okay, but we, and, don't, we don't know that for sure. Yes, yeah, there, there, there is, a, there is the, an in allegation. The air. It is it's, in the hair. Everybody let, is let aware of that. Investigate it. Let INEC investigate and, and come out and give us the assurance mm -hmm. that there won't be any interference any in untoward, untoward occurrence, occurrences, occurrences in their, well, on, 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 on their uh, server as far uh, the election. Indeed. We, we shall definitely be, um, you know, uh, you know, on INEC to give clarification on this. But I want to thank you uh, very much, Dr. Musbao uh, Alamun Latif, Senior Lecturer, University of Hull in the UK. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for making time for us this morning. Appreciate My you. My pleasure. Thank you, too. All right, then. And uh, Elenio, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Shegmo Oluladi, National Secretary, Humanitarian Social Directory, APC Presidential Campaign Council, former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Well, that's our program today. Please Thank join you us for tomorrow. having me. Indeed, our pleasure. Yeah. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.